Plant a tree up on the hill And days go by on your windowsill Then you're standing in its shade Raise your children tall and proud Chase away the lightning clouds Until you finally get old and gray We all fade away Plant a flag and make a stand I'll Build a fence around your land But by and by the stones will crumble down So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. I'm down here at the Woodyard today, and it has turned out to be a really nice day. Uh, this morning, we had some rain, just cloudy, overcast, kind of yucky, but turning out to be pretty nice. This morning, when it was raining, we split uh, probably another two quart of wood. Myself, Levi, and daughter Eva's boyfriend, John. Turns out he's a pretty good worker. But the wood bunker is about full. We can fit a little bit more in there. Woodshed is about two thirds full. All our baskets are full. But right now I'm gonna work on the floor in that last bay down there. And then we're gonna fill that all with strictly red oak. Out of that one little log on the mill, I got four, four by fours. Well, three and a half by three and a half. And one, that's eh, about nine inches wide inch and a half thick that'll be the floor these will be the stringers and I got some more on the Avant over there for the floor I think I'll still need a couple pieces but I got that laying around I'll tell you what if you are not happy with the weather around here all you got to do is wait like three minutes clouds rolled in starting to rain again literally in three minutes
right, I almost got it. I am lacking a couple boards here at the end. I'll saw them next time I'm running the mill. But this is uh, plenty to get started in here. As you could tell with the chainsaw, I, I wasn't being real precise, but it doesn't really matter. So today's video is not about putting a floor in a woodshed. Uh, while I was doing that, I was kind of collecting my thoughts and figuring out what I wanted to say and how I was going to say it. We're going to talk about a variety of subjects, all related to YouTube, how YouTube works, how our channel works, how I approach things, all those kind of things we're going to talk about. Now, I thought most everyone had a real good understanding on how this all happens, but looking over the comments from the last week or two, it appears there's still a lot of people out there that don't have any idea what is actually going on here. So I'm going to do my best to explain it all. And for those of you that do understand how this all works, you may pick up on a couple things that you didn't know. So this is the Avant 860i. I rented this machine. I went over it in a couple videos. But we're going to take the first video that I did on this machine and we're going to talk about that. So I'm going to read just a couple comments from that video, which is kind of what gave me the idea to talk about this. And by the way, when I talk about like a nasty comment on occasion, a lot of people will say I should just ignore them, don't let them get to me, and they honestly don't get to me. I don't care either way. If somebody watches our video and they leave a comment, whether it's nasty or nice, it's all good for me either way. I'm actually doing this just to try to help some of these people so they're not always in the dark and they have a better understanding of things. So here's one comment. Wow, another show, another $100,000 plus piece of equipment. You know, just looking at Mike, he doesn't look like a millionaire. I'm not sure the angle of this show anymore. It started off beautiful cutting trails and some woodlands and watching the dogs. And now it became, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Now it's like checkbook and sponsors gone wild. That would be a cool name, Mike. I should actually title this video that. And he goes on and there's, I mean, I'm not going to read them all. People tell me that if I keep spending money, I'm going to be homeless and back to blasting because Melissa's going to kick me out and I'll be looking for a place to live. And I just want to try to explain to these people so they don't look so confused, I guess I should say. This machine is a rental, and I went over that in a video because I thought down the road it may be something that I was interested in. I could have demoed this machine, but that would just be for a couple hours. So I wanted to put it through its paces. And while doing so, now here's the part that these people don't have any idea about. The video on this machine will pay for the rental, okay? That's how this all works. Now, if I buy it, it's going to take a lot of videos to pay for a machine like this. I'm not sure if I am. Probably not. So I invest in my business. My business is YouTube. My business is selling lumber, selling firewood. We sell merchandise. We sell fire starter. We do, do all sorts of things. And I reinvest in my business. Because when this is all said and done, the YouTube thing, I'm going to have a bunch of stuff left. You know what I mean? And I can just kind of keep continuing on what I'm doing without the cameras. So, like I said, I reinvest in my business. Now, it would be easier for me and less expensive if I just did videos like, you see them all the time, Angry Karen Discovers Trespassing Bigfoot in Elderly Woman's Abandoned School Bus. I could do videos like that, like the whole Jerry Springer world of YouTube, uh, a lot of people like that kind of stuff. They're into the drama. You know, it's probably mostly all made up, but I would rather drive into a bridge abutment than make videos like that. I like to do things. I like to build things. I like to grow things like our little business we have here. And to do that, you have to reinvest in your business. So I like equipment. There's no secret about that. I think everybody knows that. So I will try different things, and I am open and honest with everybody all the time on what I'm doing. Some people don't hear it. You know, I'll say I rented this machine, and literally in the comments, there'll be, I can't believe you bought a $100,000 piece of equipment. They have no idea. So the way I see it is this. It's kind of a win-win for everybody. I can rent a machine like this, and if I do my job right, 
the video or videos will pay for the rental of the machine. That can even be said for the other equipment that I buy, right? So I reinvest that and I have the equipment. So that's how I try to do things. And I think a lot of times people think they're the only one watching a video. Like that first video I did on this machine, I think it had 106,000 views so far, which is pretty good. Now, if you look at Beaver Stadium at Penn State, holds about 105,000 people. So that's how many people watch that video. You know, we all look at numbers and see views, but until you see a picture like that, you don't realize it. And like I said, people think they're the only ones watching or something. And I had a guy say, that's not for the common man. Um, you know, he's going to unsubscribe. I know it's not for the common man. If it was, everybody would have a wheel loader in their parking lot. That's not the case. I think out of those 106,000 people that watch it, the overwhelming majority of those people are people like me that have a few acres of property or more. They cut wood. They might have a sawmill, maybe somebody with a landscaping business, all different kind of people. You know, picture that stadium again. You don't know any of those people, you know, all different walks of life, all different professions. But when I do videos like this, I think a large percentage of the people that watch it or people like me that can just appreciate like cool equipment. They like seeing that kind of stuff. You might have a guy who has a landscaping business who's searching for Avant 860i or just Avant. They can learn a little bit about it. I can get a lot of work done with it. It's like a win, win, win for everybody. In that crowd of 106,000 people, you may have a a guy that's in charge of all the city works or city parks. And he's like, man, that thing would be perfect for what we do. I don't expect everything that I show in a video to be for everybody. It's not, you know, I'm not even sure if this thing's for me yet. It's too much money, to be honest with you. I may be looking towards just a mini skid. I know it's totally different than this, but anyway, I'm getting off track. Like I said, 106,000 people, all walks of life, all different professions, and I like to reinvest into my business. So that's kind of how it works. I hope that makes sense. I make a living on YouTube, and I make a living doing a lot of other different things as well, and it's just part of our income, and I like to invest in our business and keep it growing. We are very, very fortunate, our channel is, because there are so many different channels, thousands and thousands of them, that do kind of the same stuff we do. And uh, we have been able to maintain and even grow, and we still get really good views on our videos. You know, you will see channels out there with five, six, eight hundred million subscribers, which subscribers doesn't really matter. That's another thing people don't understand. I mean, it matters because if they click the bell icon, they'll get a notification when you upload and they'll click on your video. So that part matters. What matters is the people that watch your videos, you know? But anyway, you'll see channels with a million subscribers that get 10 or 15,000 views on a video, you know, where we're always right around that 90 to 100,000 mark. And sometimes it goes up from there. I couldn't ask for any more. That is fantastic. And I appreciate all of you that watch the videos. And I think one of the reasons you do is not my charming personality is I keep changing, I keep evolving, and I keep reinvesting into the business, whether it be YouTube, the firewood, the sawmill. And like I said, I'm 100% honest about everything. If I buy something, I'll tell you I bought it, uh, like that Rex 600 processor. They just, it was a demo. I used it for like a month or so. I'll tell you about that. I've got nothing to hide. You'll see other channels out there, you know, that, and that's up to them. They don't go into a lot of detail and things. I don't care either way. You know what I mean? This Avant, I rented it, probably too much money, probably not going to buy it. I might try something else out. It's what I like to do. It's working and I am reinvesting in my business. So I hope that explains it for everybody. You know, like I said, I can rent a machine. I'm going to repeat myself here. I can rent a machine. And if I do my job, the videos will pay for the rental of the machine. Does that make sense? And if I buy a machine, you know, 
I didn't make enough money on the videos on my excavator to justify buying it, but all the other stuff I did with it, I definitely worked out for me. You know what I mean? I research everything. I think things through. And uh, like I said, who knows how this all ends or when it ends. We're just going to keep going while I still enjoy it, which I do. And uh, we'll see what happens. But everything's changing. And by the way, since we're talking about money, I got to show you something. I probably ticked some people off with this video, so I'm going to tick some more people off right now. This guy that I'm about to show you, you're not going to believe this. He is the president's top economic advisor, okay? They made a mistake by letting this guy on camera. The U.S. government can't go bankrupt because we can print our own money. Like you said, they print the dollars. So why, why does the government even borrow? Well, um, the, uh, so the, I mean, again, some of this stuff gets... Some of the language that the MM, some of the language and concepts are just confusing. I mean, the government definitely prints money, and it definitely lends that money, which is why uh, the government definitely prints money, and then it lends that money by uh, by selling bonds. Uh, is that what they do? They they um, they yeah they they um, they sell bonds. Yeah, they sell bonds, right? Because they sell bonds, and people buy the bonds and lend them the money. Yeah, so. A lot of times, a lot of times, at least to my ear with, with MMT, the, the language and the concepts can be kind of unnecessarily confusing, but there is no question that the government prints money and then it uses that money to, um, uh, 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 so, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just, I, don't, I can't really talk, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't know what they're talking about. Now, part of me thought, now I wasn't sure, but the way things are run in government, I thought they have some master plan that they're not filling us in on, like with the debt, all these things. And other part of me thought maybe they're just stupid, you know? After seeing that video, that is the top economic advisor. He was saying that the government prints money and lends that money to people when they buy treasury bonds, which is the exact opposite of what actually happens. When they sell treasury bonds, they're borrowing from the people. This guy has no idea. I, I didn't know whether I should laugh, cry, or be scared when I saw that video. I couldn't believe it. And I guarantee you, I shouldn't say guarantee, but I'm pretty sure that guy probably went to some Ivy League school somewhere, and he probably had the right connections and just kind of worked his way up oblivious to all things around him and ends up a top economic advisor to the White House. It's unbelievable. Maybe he's one of the ones that left those dumb comments. I don't know. But anyway, I hope that answers some questions. I do. I appreciate y'all being here and I will catch you on the next one.